Hi, and welcome to another episode of No Limits Map to Triathlon podcast. In this episode, I'm going to talk about where I am right now with my Ironman training. I have just completed stage five, which is called in the Map to Triathlon program, Building Me Up Buttercup, which is basically building up the volume as we get close to Ironman. And I build up to three hours running and build up to six hours biking. And once I've done that phase, I'm moving on to phase six, which is a ready to roll phase. So right now, at the time of this recording, I am in the phase ready to roll, which means I'm ready to race. It's kind of a cool feeling to be here because all the hard work is done. The workouts, that are remaining are really not that difficult. The hardest workout I think that I have is a threshold bike test. And I do that so that I can really dial in my power numbers for race day. And the workout calls for 30 minutes, basically as hard as I can go for 30 minutes on the bike. And even that's not so bad, right? So I'm like, ah, oh, it's not so bad. I'm trying to figure out which day to do it. Do I do it tomorrow? Do I do it Wednesday? It doesn't really matter. And it, the nice thing is, is it doesn't phase me. It's like, oh, it's no big deal. It's not like going out for a three hour run or a five hour bike ride. It's just like, I could do this in an hour and a half and I'll be done. And there's such a, a great feeling to know that all the hard work is done. And now I'm looking ahead at planning my trip. For me, I'm racing Ironman Montreal Blanc, and that's in Quebec which means I live in Calgary, I gotta fly to get there because it's on the other side of Canada. So I'm planning my trip. I'm gonna fly out on uh, Tuesday, like Wednesday morning at one in the morning. And I arrive at seven in the morning. That first day is gonna be very relaxing, just basically doing nothing. Then the Thursday is putting the bike together testing out the, the lake, testing out the waters, and then we're going to do a two-hour bike ride testing out some of the course. Friday, we're going to uh, probably do another swim, then we're going to rent mountain bikes, and I love doing this. I love renting a mountain bike and then biking the run course. The run course in Mont Tremblant is two loops, two loops of 21k and so yes we'll be on a mountain bike yes it's going to take a while to do but not that bad and it's a really great way to get comfortable and familiar with the run course I started doing this when I was doing Ironman Canada and Whistler <clears throat> and it was great and I would do it year after year and the more times you do it the more familiar you get with the course when you do not live in in the area, it's hard to get comfortable with the course. Like you might, you might uh, drive it once, right? But that's not that's not enough. And it's a different feel from actually being on the course than being in a car. Like going up hills in a car, all you do is press down the gas and away you go, right? When you're on a bike and you're on the run course, you can feel. Well, what does that hill feel like? I know it's still different from being running but it's close and I like it and I recommend you if you're doing a big race or any race really if you have the chance to take your bike bike it now I think some of the course is like on dirt or on trail so I'm not going to take the tri bike I'm going to rent a mountain bike just keep it super chill nice and relaxed just getting very comfortable with the course the weather out there looks hot so those three days, so I'll be there Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four days before the race. My job there is to get acclimatized to the heat and not burn. So I'm going to be putting on a ton of sunscreen to protect my skin and get out there. I'll be getting out and doing some exercise and just getting my body used to that humidity. We don't have a lot of humidity here in Calgary, so I want to get out there get hot so that it allows my body to get used to the race so that when I'm racing on Sunday I'm like yeah I'm ready for this for me I like racing the heat if I had an option of racing cold or 
hot, I would take hot every day of the week. As I get older, I just don't enjoy the cold as much. Especially racing, it's just too cold. I know some people are totally the opposite of that, but give me heat any day of the week. Now I was talking to Mark today in the, in the lake. He swam and uh, he raced Ironman Philippines. He was saying the temperature there was 45 degrees at Celsius. Now that's that's a little bit too hot. I don't think I don't think I want to race like that. But high 20s, 30, that's okay for me. That's okay. As I get closer to the race, what I'm thinking now is what do I need? So I'll have a checklist of things to go through. What do I need for my bike? Do I need new tires? Right? Do I need a tune-up? Do I need to clean it? I need to clean it because on, on Saturday, we had to ride in the rain and the bike is filthy, filthy. So yes, I need to clean the bike. Do I need new tires? No. What I do is every year, I usually buy new tires for the key race. I race on them, then take them off. And I have some tires from last year just sitting in a box. So I'm gonna take out those tires. So it's gonna save me a little bit of money by not purchasing new tires, but I'll be putting on tires with really good rubber. <clears throat> My nutrition is all bought. I bought a bunch of nutrition uh, a couple of weeks ago. For me, I really like uh, the cliff blocks. So I'm taking a lot of cliff blocks and cliff bars with me. That's my go-to nutrition. And I'm taking, the salt I'm taking is base salt. Base salt is great for me. I like that a lot. I'll do the checklist of the bike, what I need for the bike, checklist for nutrition, checklist for the gear. And really the only gear that I need, or that I'm worried about, are my swim goggles. I've got some goggles now that fit great. They're not leaky, but they, they fog up really, really bad. Now I just raced a week ago, Calgary 7.3, and for the first time ever, I use those foggies, F-O-G-G-I-E-S. It's like a, a moist, almost like a moist towel that, and you rub the outside of your goggles on the inside, and I suppose it's gonna stop your goggles from fogging. And you know what, it worked like a charm. So before I leave, I need to make sure I get to the store, buy some foggies, so my goggles will be ready to go. And I'm gonna test it out in the lake before. And if they don't work, I will buy brand new goggles at, at the expo. I've done this many times, just buy goggles. And I've raced <laughs> many times, I just throw on brand new goggles, don't even test them out, throw them on, and away I go. I just keep buying the same brand over and over, so I know they're gonna work, I know they fit my face. And I'm never really worried about trying some things new. I know a lot of people say, oh, Todd, never try anything new on race day. And that's, you know, that's that's usually a pretty good rule. However, I've tried lots of things new sometimes, and you know what? Things don't go to hell. Things are sometimes okay. It's sometimes fun to do that. Yes, th things can go wrong, but you know what? What if they don't go wrong? And I know that goggles, new goggles, not gonna be a problem. I've even raced in brand new shoes. I think I've done that twice. I've done two Ironmans and brand new shoes, never even worn them, throwing them on, away I go. That, I don't really recommend, but you can do it. You can do it. I remember a few years ago, I had an athlete. He totally switched to nutrition. Just because the nutrition wasn't available, he said, well, let's try this. What could go wrong? And you know what? He had a great race. So sometimes, trying something new on race day is not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. So get it out of your head thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this because I've never tried it in training. It's going to be horrible. It may not be horrible. It may be fantastic. And yes, testing things out before race day is the smartest, sane way to do things, right? But if you don't have that opportunity for whatever reason, go for it. Go for it. In Montremblant, I did this five years ago. And I remember the banquet, like the athlete banquet that's on Friday, races on Sunday. They did like a fantastic job. It was so impressive, but it's so long. But I will go again because I just enjoy, I, mean, I enjoy the show they put on. And that's going to be, it takes a lot of energy from the athletes. 
So that's something I'm trying to prepare for too, is on Friday, keep Friday relatively easy because I know that the athlete banquet at five o'clock, starting at five o'clock, is going to be tiring. But if I know that in advance, and I can plan my day, it'll be okay so I'm not totally wasted. So you do not want to do a lot of training on that day and then go to the athlete banquet because that's long and it's very tiring. So plan that day accordingly. The thing on Friday too, remember the races on Sunday, Friday night. That's the night where you really want to try and get as much sleep as possible. The reason being is on Saturday, the night before the race, many people have trouble sleeping. They just do. Sometimes you might sleep an hour, two, three, four hours. And you'll worry that, oh, I didn't get enough sleep this night. And then you, you think about that throughout the race. I'm going to tell you now, if you only sleep an hour or two, or just lie down in bed and rest, you're going to be fine for your Ironman. Because I've done it many times. And that's why I'm telling you on the Friday, when you're not as stressed, focus on getting a really good night's sleep. Because there's a chance the night before the race, you're not going to sleep that well. I'm a guy that still likes to uh, carbo load. So carbo loading is just like eating a lot of carbohydrates uh, as you get closer to the race. I like doing that two days before the race. So two days before the race is Friday. We have that athlete banquet and I'm sure they're going to have a lot of pasta there for the athletes. So that day is the day that I'm going to be eating quite a bit of carbohydrates. The night before the race, my plan for that, I'm a little bit superstitious. So what I usually do for a big race, my best Ironman ever, I had fish and rice and vegetables. And the next day I had the best race ever. Is it because of the meal? Probably not. However, if I have the chance to have fish, rice, and vegetables, that's what I have the night before. The total reason, the only reason why I do that is because I had superstition that back in 2008, that's what I had for dinner. So I'm going to try, I try to replicate it each time. Although, you know what? Maybe I'll try something new. Maybe I'll have like a big pizza or something. What do you think? What could go wrong, right? We have a new, new training, new training plan where you eat uh, pizza or McDonald's the night before in Iron Man. That could be definitely a, an interesting podcast. The other big thing I want to do before I, I head out is I want to print off my race plan sheet. And I want to come up with my race plan for the day. And that starts with waking up. So what am I going to do when I wake up? What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to be thinking? What time do I need to be at transition? What do I do in transition? Do I have a tra transition checklist? Yes, I will. What do I, need to, what do I need to do in the transition before the race? What am I thinking about during the swim? What are my goal times for the swim? T1, what are my goal times for T1? What do I need to do in T1? Switch over to the bike. What are my targets for the bike? Power, pace, heart rate, effort. What am I gonna take in for nutrition? When am I gonna take it in? What am I gonna be thinking with those thoughts in my head? T2, same thing. What am I gonna be doing for T2? How fast is it gonna be? What am I going to be thinking? What do I need to be focused on? Then move on to the run. What are my targets for the pace? Time, heart rate, effort. What am I thinking and feeling? Finish. What do I want to do when I cross that finish line? You might think that's a silly thing to think about is what do you want to do when you cross the finish line? But I'll tell you one thing. Most people, I don't know if I should say most people, I can say there's a good percentage of people that when they cross the finish line, it's it's not very exciting to watch. And I watch many, many, many Ironmans. So when people, my athletes are doing Ironman, I will watch them finish if I'm not there. I love watching them finish and seeing what happens. Ironman Canada just took place and I had an athlete, Ben, who crossed the finish line. He had some trouble in the race. Did not go as, as he expected. The temperature was 34, 38 degrees. It was hot. There were a lot of problems, a lot of DNFs. So his race was slower than expected. And so I was watching him and following him, and 
hand. I saw him cross the finish line at home on my computer, and I, and I watched him cross, and he had a great finish. His arms were up, they were pumping as he got closer to the finish line, and you could just see him yelling when he crossed the finish line, and he was so happy, and the last frame that I was able to capture of him was a big smile on his face. And I'm like, that's how you finish. If I go back to Calgary 70.3, I have a picture of an athlete, Kim, who crossed the finish line. She's not the fastest athlete. I'll tell you what, she's maybe the most grateful athlete out there. When she crosses the finish line, her arms are thrown up. Like, they are shooting straight up. I can't do it in the car because I'll go through the roof. But it's just wonderful, wonderful to see her do that. And I go, that's how we got to finish. We need to be grateful for all these opportunities we have and to race with gratitude and have a great time and celebrate your finish line. Celebrate it. So plan, what do you want to do when you cross that finish line? What are you going to do? This is what I hate. I hate it when people cross the finish line, they stop their watch, their heads down, that's your finish photo. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So if you're listening to this and that's you, throw your arms up, have a great finish photo, celebrate that finish line, and then a few steps after, hit stop. A few seconds, it's not gonna matter. Your clock is not official anyways, okay? I'm right now at a, going for coffee to meet an athlete, and we're gonna talk about her training. I'm super excited for that. It's one of my favorite things to do, is sit down and have coffee, and talk about training and coaching and triathlon. So before I get there, I'm gonna sign off with you guys and say thank you very much for, for, for watching or listening. And uh, I'll see you in the next podcast. This is Coach Todd saying thank you very much and happy training. Bye.